Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. We've already talked about what a lumbar synovial facet cyst is, what the non-operative treatments are. Today we'll be talking about the surgical treatments for a lumbar synovial cyst. As a reminder, the facet joint is the little joint that's on the back of the spine. It's covered by a capsule, that's a synovial capsule. And there can be an out pouching that's fluid filled and ultimately along with a bone spur, the cyst can push on a nerve and cause back pain as well as buttock pain and leg pain because it's pinching the nerve. Just to be clear, no matter how big the cyst is, no matter how much that nerve looks compressed on an MRI, you don't have to have the cyst out. It's not a tumor, it doesn't have to come out. If you can live with the pain and you have a good quality of life, then you can just live with it and do nothing for it. When should you have surgery for lumbar synovial cysts? It's pretty simple. It's when the back pain, the buttock and leg pain are interfering with your quality of life. Now there's two aspects of quality of life. One is physical quality of life. You can't do the things you want to do because of the pain. You can't golf, go shopping, travel, etc. The other part of quality of life is emotional quality of life. So nerve pain can cause patients to be depressed, downhearted, irritable, have mood changes. So if you're having changes in your physical and emotional quality of life, then certainly surgery is reasonable. Now, buttock and leg pain often coexist with back pain, particularly when you have a lumbar synovial cyst, but I would be very cautious before having surgery for a synovial cyst if you only have back pain. Surgery in somebody that only has back pain has to be really taken with caution. There's many, many things that can cause back pain, so all those other things have to be ruled out. First, you'll have to work with your doctor on that. In general, there's two types of surgeries for a synovial cyst. The first is just called a decompression, meaning we go in and remove a little bit of bone, we take the cyst off of the nerve, we decompress the nerve and make the nerve free, and then that's it. That's called a keyhole laminotomy. The next is a decompression and fusion where we take the pressure off the nerve, but then we put in rods, screws, sometimes cages to stabilize that segment, to fuse that segment and eliminate the entire facet so that it's not a problem ever again. In general, the benefits, regardless of what kind of surgery you have, there's about a 90% chance of taking away the majority of your buttock and leg pain away. How much pain we take away depends on how badly the nerve's already been damaged. It's unrealistic to expect to be 100% pain-free after surgery. When we say majority, it means more than half. So you have, if you have an eight out of 10 pain before surgery, you can expect a four out of 10 or better, that would be considered a surgical success. There's variable relief and low back pain, particularly depending on what type of surgery you have for this. And again, you should be cautious if you only have low back pain in the setting of a synovial cyst, be cautious with having surgery for that. Before we talk about the fusion procedure, I wanna remind you that a lumbar synovial cyst often coexists with something called degenerative spondylolisthesis, which is abnormal slippage of the bone. I do have some videos on that in the link below. When there's abnormal slippage, the joint and back gets abnormally stressed, so you're more prone to developing a synovial cyst. And here you see a patient that has pretty significant instability, L4, L5. You can see where the facet joint here is, and you can see how that capsule could stretch as the bones are moving back and forth. If there is significant spondylolisthesis, significant instability at the level of the cyst, then in general, we recommend taking the pressure off the nerve and also fusing the spine because the thought is that the instability is what's causing the cyst and just taking the pressure off the nerve may not be enough. All techniques for fusion typically involve rods and screws, sometimes cages. And in general, if you think about it, some of the back pain in the setting of a cyst and instability could be coming because of arthritis at that joint secondary to the motion. Well, if you do a fusion and you lock the two bones in place, you eliminate that, there is a better chance of relieving low back pain with a fusion than not doing a fusion in the setting of a spondylolisthesis. You'll have to refer to my degenerative spondylolisthesis videos on the types of surgical techniques, the recovery, and the outcomes. These are the same regardless of whether or not you have spondylolisthesis with or without a cyst, so you should just refer to those videos if you're going to have a fusion for a lumbar synovial cyst. There's lots of factors to consider, but you should consult your surgeon to see which surgery is right for you. I would say that 90% of the time, there really is no instability or minimal instability when I see a cyst. In that situation, a fusion is not really needed. So most of the time, I'm not doing a fusion for a patient with a lumbar synovial cyst. 
we're typically doing just a decompression, meaning we're surgically removing a little bit of the joint, making a little window, and removing the cyst off of the nerve. That's often called a micro decompression. That's typically done with what's called a laminotomy. So we remove this little green area. This is the lamina portion of the bone. So laminotomy means to make a little window. And we basically use a small instrument to carve that little piece of bone away, the bone spur away. It exposes part of the facet. Then we take a little portion of the facet joint away along with the cyst. I usually refer to it as a micro decompression, but you may see in a surgeon's note that they say something like a laminotomy, partial facetectomy, that really is just a micro decompression. When we do that, we take the majority of the cyst away and we're typically able to get to the entire cyst, but the facet joint is largely still intact because there is still remaining joint. We're only taking a small part of that facet joint just so we can get to the cyst. And there still is part of the capsule of the entire joint still intact. This is usually done with a, a small tubular retractor, so a small incision, or through a little mini open retractor, and we use little dental burrs and little instruments. This particular burr is only three millimeters, and that's used to make that little opening to take the pressure off of the nerve. This is one of my patients. She had pretty significant right, more than left-sided buttock and leg pain. This is her x-ray. She actually does have a little bit of spondylolisthesis, a slight bit of instability. She has minimal back pain, mostly buttock and leg pain. In this situation, um, I elected just to do a decompression without effusion. This is her preoperative MRI. This is the side view. You'll, you'll see here the nerves are swimming down. And this uh, big thing in the middle here is a cyst. This is the cross section. You'll see that the cyst is occupying most of the um, space for the nerves. And this is after the decompression. So we went in, took the pressure off of one side, actually did an interesting technique where took pressure off the one side and went across and cut over to the other side to take the pressure off the other side as well to spare some of the ligaments. Sometimes when a cyst is there a long time, I always get a CT scan. A CT scan looks at bony anatomy because you wanna know before going into surgery if some of that cyst has calcified, turned into bone because it can scar onto the dura. So your surgeon may recommend a CT scan as well as an MRI. A surgical decompression or a surgical micro decompression for a cyst usually takes about an hour. I typically do an outpatient at a surgery center, which means you go home the same day after a few hours of recovery. There's two uh, significant risks to surgery to understand. One is nerve injury because we're working around the nerves. We do watch the nerves the whole time with an individual in the room called a neurological monitoring individual. And they're watching and mapping the nerve and letting me know if there's something going on with the nerve while I'm working. The chance of nerve injury again is less than one in a thousand. There's a chance of a dural tear, the nerve swim in fluid. That fluid's covered by a thin sac of a saran wrap. If the bone spur or the cyst is scarred to the sac, which is often the case as a remove of the sac of tear, it's not a big deal. Spinal fluid leaks out. We know at the time of surgery, we typically repair that with a little suture and some glue. We have to lay you flat for one or two days. It delays your recovery. It doesn't change the ultimate outcome of surgery. Chance of a dural tear uh, in the setting of a cyst really ranges in the literature. I tell my patients that it averages around 5%. And if there's a large cyst that's been there for a long time, sometimes it's calcified, meaning the cyst has turned to bone and grown onto the dura, then the risk of a dural tear is a little bit higher. It is often the case that because of the scarring of the cyst onto the nerve, we may take the cyst off, but leave the back wall of the cyst stuck onto the dura. So if this is the dura or the nerve, and this is the cyst, we can decompress this side of it, but then the back wall is still stuck to the dura, which is totally fine because we've largely taken the majority of the cyst all wall away and the internal contents of the cyst away. And so sometimes you'll hear a surgeon say, well, I could get to the cyst, but I had to leave a little bit onto the dura. And again, that's totally fine. What about recovery? Most patients have uh, one to three days of low back pain. The first day is the worst. Usually in the first day or two, you're more in bed than out, but we let you walk as much as tolerated uh, immediately after surgery. Most patients are walking unassisted for a wound check into my office at five days after surgery. I put my patients in a soft brace only when they're up and around walking. They don't have to have it on when they're laying flat or sitting, but it just helps remind them they've had surgery and also helps, helps them avoid bending, lifting, and twisting in the first six weeks. Most patients at six weeks are walking one to two miles in total. We start physical therapy at six weeks and then slowly back to the gym at around eight weeks. It's really important to remember that that nerve has been compressed for a long time. Buttock and leg pain doesn't go away immediately after surgery. Sometimes it can, but more often than not, 
it can take up to a year for that nerve, sometimes two to totally recover. So don't despair from the first six to 12 weeks, your leg pain hasn't gotten much better. Now, what about longer term risks? Remember, we're going in there and simply doing a micro decompression. So anything else can happen at those levels, cyst recurrence, fracture, instability, et cetera. But because there isn't a fusion, the cyst could come back. So if that cyst comes back, it's exactly what it sounds like. You can have recurrent leg pain or back pain. Here's a great paper that looks at almost a thousand patients across many studies and showed that at two years, there's about a 2% incidence of cyst recurrence or that cyst coming back. Here's another paper that followed patients for even longer, up to 20 years, and found that there was about a 5% rate of cyst recurrence if there was no instability. So if there's no spondylolisthesis, you have a stable spine, you go in there and decompress the nerve, there's about a 5% chance at 20 years that there will be some recurrence. Now that percentile obviously goes up because if you have pre-existing instability or persistent instability, the rate of recurrence will increase. If the pain does come back, you're back where you started. You start with conservative care, medications, injections, um, cyst rupture, cyst aspiration, etc. In general, if a patient has recurrence of a cyst and it's because of instability, I usually will recommend a fusion at that point because my belief is that instability is probably causing some of that cyst recurrence. Many of my patients ask me what a cyst actually looks like intraoperatively. So here I am at the surgery center taking a lumbar synovial cyst out. Um, it's often that sometimes it's the case that we can get the entire cyst out. It's more often the case that we're taking it out piecemeal. We usually can peel it off the dura. Here's a picture of a cyst that I've taken off the dura. It kind of has this uh, rubbery rind that the cyst turns into uh, that's a little bit hard. Um, and you can see it just looks like soft tissue here. Hopefully you learned something about the surgical treatment of lumbar synovial cysts. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button and look out for more videos in the future.